the North Korean nuclear threat looming large over President Trump's meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping later this week. The president says if China won't take a stand, the U.S. is ready to act alone on dismantling the threat. Yesterday, President Trump told the Financial Times, quote, if China is not going to solve North Korea, we will. That is all I am telling you. Meantime, new satellite imagery shows that North Korea could be ready for a sixth nuclear test. Joining us this morning is former Florida Congressman Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Colonel West, the president wants to see China step up pressure on Pyongyang. We have been saying this for after administration after administration. Mm -hmm. It's not happened. Has, has President Trump got the right idea? Well, it's good to be with you, Dagan. And one of the first things that I would correct is I would not be meeting with the Chinese President Jinping down at Mar-a-Lago. I think that you lose a sense of your power base. It should happen in Washington, D.C., there at the White House, or it should happen up at Camp David. It shouldn't happen at uh, President Trump's resort. The other thing is you have to be able to show China that you're willing to take actions before Xi Jinping even gets here. As a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, the Navy was requesting an increase in what is called the Freedom of Navigation Operations there in the South China Sea. The FONOPS is the uh, short term for it because we know about the expansion of China into the South China Sea, the building of those man-made islands, and also they are now landing military aircraft. That's a great way to send a message to Xi Jinping before he comes here that we're not going to tolerate that. And as far as President Trump, what he has to do is sit down and make sure that he's on the same sheet of music with our allies in the region, such as South Korea and also uh, Japan. Uh, because right now, when you make this type of assertion, you know, the thing that Xi Jinping is going to come here and say, uh, you know, I'm from Missouri. You got to show me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Colonel West, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the U.S. trade relationship with China recently, and um, mm -hmm. President Trump signed two executive orders recently to that end. Do you think that that is good leverage in some of these talks, that there's a possibility that the United States could, with its economic activity, kind of push China into a role where it has to negotiate with us better on foreign policy? Do you think that that really has any leverage at all, or that that's a hopeful situation? No, you're, you're absolutely right. One of the things that they teach you at the military uh, senior colleges is that there are four elements of a nation's power. It's the diplomatic, informational, military, and economics called the dime theory. So I think it's very important that we use the diplomatic aspect when working with our allies in the region, but also that economic aspect. And the further point of that economic aspect is what are we going to do with tax reform so we can get our economy booming here in the United States of America and increase our GDP growth. But that trade aspect, dealing with China, is another important thing that we need to put the pressure on China. Uh, Kevin, yeah. I just want to point out, though, that the Trump administration and Peter Navarro here on this program denied that it was that those executive orders were directly related to China. Yeah. Because, again, they did, uh, the orders did dr address essentially every country that we trade with. Yeah. C Colonel West, uh, my main question mm -hmm. here is, do, can we see more sanctions come out and actually go against the Chinese to use that as leverage? Because one of the things that we haven't done is actually gone off of their banking relationships with North Korea. The Wall Street Journal has covered this. They call it the North uh, Korea sanctions myth. There was an article last week about it, about how they, they uh, North Korea isn't even sanctioned as hard as a country like Burma. So can we exhaust these resources? Because you've seen it come out in the media over the weekend that, you know, everything's on the table. No, I think that's a very important aspect, and I think also that you have Chinese businessmen that are doing uh, operations here in the United States of America. We need to put pressure on them as well, because what you have is a communist government that learned a very important lesson with the collapse of the Soviet Union, is the way that you confront and defeat the West and the United States of America is not so much militarily, but you do it economically, and that sets the conditions for a later or an ensuing military uh, achievement. But look, as Dagan said, we've been monkeying around and playing around with uh, North Korea. I was stationed there in Korea along the DMZ in 1995. You go back and you can see the agreement that President Clinton had talking about reducing and stopping North Korea's nuclear program. And here we are, you know, what, 17 some odd, 20 years later, and it's still the same thing going on. Right, with a, with a new leader, but the same position. I want to turn to the Middle mm -hmm. East. Colonel, a source has told Fox News that President Trump's son-in-law, 
who also works in the White House, Jared Kushner, is on a surprise trip to Iraq. He's said to be traveling with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joe Dunford, to see the Iraq situation firsthand and to show support for Baghdad. Colonel West, does this trip mean an expanded role in foreign policy for Kushner? And what does it mean about our position as a nation in Iraq? Well, I got to tell you, I think we need to check his birth certificate and see if he was born in Smallville, Kansas. Because when you think about it, Jerry Kushner, who is in charge of uh, government innovation and restructuring uh, the, and streamlining the federal government, he's in charge of uh, solving the uh, Middle East peace process between Iran and the quote unquote Palestinians. And now he's traveling with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to Iraq. It's very important, I think, that the United States of America reasserts itself in the Middle East. We see that Russia is doing exactly that. And we also need to undermine the hegemonic uh, dominance and, and spread expansion of Iran, especially in Iraq. Uh, we need to start looking at how we can rebuild our relationships. But, Colonel, do you, do you have a problem with Jerry Kushner? Because Kushner works in the, in the White House. No, 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 I have a big problem with it. I, I really do. Uh, I do not think that uh, the young man, 36 years of age, is in a position to be able to go and t discuss military and foreign policy affairs. That's why you have a secretary of defense. That's why you have a chairman of joint chiefs of staff. That's why you have a secretary of state. Uh, I'm not going to tell President Trump how to run his business, but I will tell you that he's putting a lot of trust and confidence and duties and responsibilities on a young man that has no experience whatsoever in these uh, lines of extra in, in these areas of expertise. But Colonel, that's why he's going right to gain that experience. Well, there's something that uh, sometimes we don't like in the military. It's called discovery learning and on-the-job training. I think that you need to trust the people that you appoint into your cabinet positions. Uh, and there are things that uh, young Mr. Kushner can do. And I think that, you know, if he wants to look at how do you streamline the government, that's fine. I would say go back to the Carter administration and look at all the new government agencies and bureaucracies that's been created since then. And I think that would be a great starting point. But I don't know if he needs to be over there uh, dogtailing dog uh, General Joe Dumford, who I think is a, a pretty fine Marine officer and leader. Colonel, good to see you as always. My Telling pleasure. it like it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do not mince words, Colonel. Good to see you, Colonel Allen West. Come back soon. We want to see you here in New York City, okay? Yes, ma'am. Coming up, a 